Oh, this is great. We're going live with this one in uh, Newcastle, Colorado. The Modern Eater Show continues. Brian, this is a pleasure being at Osage Gardens. Oh, my favorite. One of my favorite places, man, for so sure. You probably, if you're in, in Denver area and you go to Natural Grocers, this is a brand you will see in the produce section. And Jared McDermott joins us. Man, this is cool. Thanks for taking time out, first of all, to spend a couple minutes with us here. Yeah, thanks for coming out, guys. Yeah, so for folks, we're in a hoop house right now in Newcastle, Colorado. But give us the lay of the land. We'll walk around a little bit. What do you got here? Just give us the, you know, 60 seconds. Yeah, 60 seconds. Uh, Osage Gardens here in Newcastle, uh, growing uh, certified organic culinary herbs for uh, almost 29 years now. Um, we are uh, here in Newcastle on about one and a half acres of greenhouses on a, uh, on a 20 acre farm nestled along the Colorado River. Mm -hmm. um, it's a uh, very productive place. We're a super busy farm. And uh, our thing is fresh, organic culinary herbs, and uh, our specialty is basil. Uh, we grow some of the some world class basil, definitely some of the finest fresh basil. Yeah, um, you can get your hands on. It's a treat, and to ha I mean to have that distribution though, and to get into people's hands because a lot of people might be watching that know exactly what you're talking about. But that's a pleasure to be able to get these out there and have culinarians cook with it everywhere. Specialty, right? Specialty items. Yeah, absolutely. Actually, uh, we grow some tough ones, um, not only culinary herbs and, and, and fresh basil is actually a very challenging crop um, to do it well and to uh, get it to the stores, you know, in, 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 in in excellent condition um, but then uh, some specialties we actually have greenhouses full of like bay leaf trees we have gr greenhouses oh. full of lime leaf trees and uh, um, edible flowers and oh. roses um, you know and more obscure herbs like sorrel or marjoram um, so yeah we we nail them all Jared do you know how many herbs you all grow uh, we grow about 22 varieties on average. 22 varieties. Well, and you are one of the only people, I think, in Colorado who's doing the kefir lime leaf, aren't you? Um, we are definitely one of the only farms that uh, here in Colorado. We, we planted trees in a greenhouse about eight years ago. Uh, it's wild. Uh, you would never believe it would work. But, uh, yeah, lime leaves and bay leaves, um, yeah, towering trees inside greenhouses Fantastic. it's super does cool. the market dictate what you grow or do you grow and you dictate what the market gets uh there's definitely give and take on that one and it does usually start with the market that uh things like fresh basil for making pesto yeah. and 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 uh, other culinary delights is you know it's gonna dictate a lot yeah you know some of the more obscure herbs that you know maybe make it on to a tv show all of a sudden pop up on the radar and are interesting so now the market definitely drives a lot of what we do here but basil right i mean that that's it that's it fresh basil um it's so such a challenging crop mm -hmm. and it uh you know and it, it doesn't transport very well so a lot of your basil is coming from mexico or california or elsewhere um and by the time it gets here it's 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 pretty rough it's damaged um doesn't uh you know um, it just doesn't do well on the shelf uh our basil we have a 24-hour kind of policy we pick and pack it wow. and have it to the grocery stores uh, literally by the next day all Jared, done right here. Yeah, and how many pounds a year are you guys pumping out of Osage Gardens? Uh, we pump uh, tens of thousands of pounds of basil a year. You That's, wanted to start out right here. What are we looking at inside of this? Uh, so this here is one of our older uh, greenhouses. This one um, has rosemary plants that are... Um, uh, these are about uh, almost 10 years old, um, and uh, we harvest them down. These a lot of this will be used for rosemary skewers um, for the holidays, um, and uh, these things uh, right now they're tr all trimmed back for early summer, but will be um, probably six feet tall. Wow! Um, for uh, late in the fall for holidays, it'll look like your uh, winter manscaping. Well, and what's so cool, though, is I, you'd almost be afraid to come in here with some of the insects that live. Because remember, we're in or, an organic environment where they're a part of everything that's going on in here. And I'll tell you, I've, I've got some pictures of some spiders in here that would probably scare you by the time another six months goes by in this room. Totally. And the bigger the plants get, uh, and in the summertime, we don't do a whole lot in here. And so it's kind of uh, left alone. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, spiders take it over. Can you show us some more? I'm looking at these beautiful flowers over here, and where can we go to? Is there anything more we can see? 
Yeah, let's uh, we can hop out of this house and uh, let's if head on is, over. That'd be great. And as we're walking over there, Jared, could you? What is some of the the viewers? I'm sure are interested. What is the hardest crop that you think? I mean, I know tarragon is tough to grow. Uh, actually, let's uh, look at some tarragon right over here. What What do you think is one of the hardest ones or ch most challenging for you guys? Um, I mean, basil is always the most challenging because uh, volume wise, uh, you know, it's a considerable amount of volume, and then uh, just it's so tender. Um, you just mentioned tarragon. Ooh. Um, tarragon is a very seasonal crop, so this is perfect tarragon. Um, and we can uh, grow tarragon um, March through midsummer, um, and then as the heat of the summer kind of comes on, uh, the plants will slow mm -hmm. down. Um, oh, that's so good, Jared. Oh, it's phenomenal. I mean, oh, that to me is like m Mother Nature's candy right there. I mean, it's just oh. It's so good. It's I love being out here. Again, how many hoop houses do you have on this property? Uh, we have about an acre and a half of greenhouses here. And just right off I-70, you, if you blink, you'll miss it. What uh, are the row crops you have going out here as well? Is that all basil? or? Uh, yeah, let's uh, take a walk over there. So this is stuff that you'll have in the heat of... The hardest time of the year. Oh my gosh, I'm loving this. I see sage in there. <laughs> yeah, so these are, uh, this is a sage hoop. Uh, these plants here are, uh, these are honestly about 12 to 15 years old. Uh, these are original wow. uh, plants um, from when uh, we moved onto this property. Mm. And um, same thing, they're kind of cut down right now. We regrow these and um, these things will be up to these green wires uh, end of summer. And, um, you know, we'll use this. It'll be our, our uh, stockpile for uh, Thanksgiving. Oh, my gosh. If you guys could have just the smells, describing the smells, I mean, you can imagine but having the abundance of this in one confined area and you're right the ecosystem that lives with these and years and years built that way uh, but you you don't rotate the hoop house uh, these big perennial crops we do not so these perennial crops actually uh, uh, we don't rotate and we keep them in and it is kind of a little ecosystem in here um, on the outside you can see way down on the far left there's lavender flowers uh, sorrel uh some thyme chives um and then the main crop in here is is the sage Are, have you guys seen an increase in your sorrel market because i was talking to some chefs in vale recently and sorrel uh, chefs are learning more and more i mean it's sorrel's been around forever more of a french french culinary herb i i feel but are you guys seeing things resurgence in old herbs that might come back or old things that you're growing yeah so actually uh, yeah you're spot on uh, things like sorrel um, even oregano some of these items that um, you know they're, they're definitely especially with a lot more people staying at home cooking um, in the last uh, few months uh -huh. um, uh, definitely an uptick in a lot of the, the, the smaller herbs for, for home Wow. how has your so uh, you know a lot of business models have changed break How's your business model changed? It has it, or thank God for distribution. What what does it look like for you guys these days? Um, so for the last 29 years, uh, culinary herbs, fresh culinary herbs, has been our staple, um, and um, you know Colorado is a busy place, um, and you know the greater Colorado uh, region is a busy place, and uh, so just the uh, just that alone has has uh, kept us kind of focused on the fresh culinary herbs. This region of Colorado, what is this land, uh, what are you available, or what are you able to grow here in this area? And uh, kind of describe this region to folks and what the weather's like here and and uh, what, you, what you can get as far as a accumulation. It's a fairly dry year this year. Last year, much more moisture, but talk about this region. Yeah, so Western Colorado, uh, once you sort of drive through the Glenwood Canyon, come through Glenwood, you go out onto the Colorado Plateau, and um, we have a relatively mild winter. We don't have a whole lot of snowpack. Um, summers are hot and dry. Um, this year has been particularly windy. Um, so outdoors uh, production, um, we, uh, we do grow some basil outside, um, and then we grow a lot of perennial herbs for uh, fall harvesting for Thanksgiving. Uh, so this field here, um, 
is actually mostly uh, thyme, sage, and rosemary. Oh. And so this whole field we will produce um, for the holidays, uh, for the Thanksgiving and uh, uh, December holiday. It's a well-kept, beautiful property. You guys do such a great job here. and the best of the best right here this is those stage garden i gotta tell you we're so i mean i'm so lucky we in colorado are so lucky to have people like jared and and the rumory who's you know started behind all this stuff we're just lucky i would say i mean i i've known you guys so long it's 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 been wild i mean really my whole 25 year career in the world of organics in colorado I've been touching you guys at some level and it's just so it's I just thank you you know I, I don't know if you get it enough if you hear that from all the people out there thank you guys because this is what you guys have done most people don't know it's just thank you yeah, thank you absolutely Jared McDermott beautiful beautiful man it's a little bit today but what a great day. Uh, we'll have a recap of the show tonight we will broadcast from through to Colorado, that's where we're staying. And uh, we've got some good, interesting stuff. I think we're gonna pop by Field to Fork Farm in Palisade, and um, we've got a busy day. So we're yeah. gonna continue on down the road, take some photos, get out of Jared's hair, gotta get back to work. But uh, the Modern Eater Show continues. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you.